miigwech everybody. Wapshki maknik kwen indigenous cause biju du tem ni sachwan donji. Um Lorraine Kobnes and the go um and I'll just explain a little bit about what I just how I introduced myself. First and foremost, I'm um my um spirit name who I'm what I was born with is uh white turtle woman. I'm from the Lynx clan and my home is here in whatever you want to call it, it's better known as Gulls or uh the new our old 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 new name is now Nisatwan. So we've gone back to uh, where we come from. The old name, Ochichawi Babagoning, if you can say that, I know it's a mouthful, um, is based on our, it was an old legend about, about a crane back in the day. But um, so I just want to acknowledge um, who I am. And uh, I've been, uh, and I'll speak a little bit of, about a lot of my passions, right? And a little bit about um, how long I've kind of been around and the work that we do and who we are as a, as a nation. And so I will start by just acknowledging everybody in the room and their willingness to learn and, and you know, um, participate and, and just showing our community's willingness to learn and participate as well, because we're, you know, we're a very progressive type of community, but very set in our traditional, that, that's the foundation of who we are as a people. And um, that's how we roll out here. So I'm from... I'll just give a little bit of uh, context to who I am. I've, you know, my background is uh, been in, believe it or not, early childhood education and um, native child and family. Maybe, are you guys seeing this funny a little bit in the back? But, so we're a small community, guys. We're located 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers outside of Kenora. We used to be one of the three communities that were tied together with Wajushko Ningham until, believe it or not, historically, we decided to separate in 1977 with a, just a formal handshake. We just said, you know what, guys, you guys live over there. You live there. You know, Wajushko Ningham, you live there. Washington's Bay, you live over there. We'll still be together. We've always been one. But we're going to start doing our own things, right? And start focusing on our communities. So we did it by a handshake. And, and we said, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're responsible for. And away you go. So we have been that way for the longest time. Um, of course, we've had monster challenges. And we've had a lot of, you know, so we've come back from a lot of things. Um, and my background is... Uh, like I said, in early childhood education. And then I went on to do some native child and family work. And then all of a sudden I was in the health field. And the next thing you know, I was thrown in the political ring by my people. And um, so I did two, one term as council, which was two years. And this is my seventh term as chief. So altogether 16 years, I call it the circus, right? The political field is uh, a circus at times. And for a lot of the uh, Anishinaabe politics, it's it's just as what you see in in you know the provincial piece and the federal piece. And we fight, we love, we hug, we kiss, we nag each other. So it's the same thing. Um, but a lot of that is the foundation of who we are in Treaty Three, and that's you know the Anishinaabe. We've been here for forever. You know we um, enjoy the the benefits of our treaty, but we also fundamentally believe in our inherent rights, jurisdictions, sacred laws, sacred responsibilities that uh, definitely supersede any beautiful anything else that comes associated with being with who we are. Um, so there's a there's a different mentality amongst our people and our, our younger people. And it, it's definitely a work in progress to be able to translate that in terms of um, educational pieces and things like that. So we choose to live it. We choose to breathe it. We choose to lead by example. And we embed all of that in the work that we do, which is why we believe as Anishinaabe people, we've seen successes. A lot of our endeavors have, have started with the foundation of ceremony and with our partners, right? We've always believed and it's written right in our, our treaty is that we're about sharing, we're about partnerships, we're, you know, so we're getting back to that, whether, you know, we have 
partners that want to, or sometimes they just don't want to. They will eventually come one day, right? Because we all, we believe we got to live and work together. So I've been around long enough to know the realities of, you know, these big monster projects and the things that we do and moving forward and kind of spearheading a lot of them because of the direction that we take. We, we all always take a lot of direction from our, our people, our elders, and our youth. That's who we do it for. In Nisachuan, we have a very traditional form of governance, which we're extremely proud of. It's something that's not replicated across the board, and we call it our Anishinaabe Customary Council. And so we operate where we have 11 major families, and in and around, we meet at least once a month where we make major, major decisions with all of our people. So it's it's sharing that responsibility of governance, of um true power to the people where we're every heads person represents an entire group of their family right so everybody on our band list is literally covered under every family representation and as a spin-off to that we are governed by committees and things like that so every family has a representation so their voices are heard so those are some of the things how we get our communication pieces out and we're a little we're progressive so we have do our our websites and our facebook and you can always catch up with what we're doing on on those sites as well so we're linked to all of our other organizations which is grand council um treaty three uh win kca bimo say uh, four wins, you name it, we're linked to everybody. So because, you know, we're, we got to be up with times and people got to know who we are. And, and this is how people connect, right? This is a monster piece of how we connect now. So that's basically what we do. I'm going to share a lot of things. Um, some of the things that are specific to NAN before I get into what's specific to our chiefs. Uh, people may not know that we do have um, we do have two major projects that we're working on right now. Um, one of the things that we're most proud of is that we are working on this is the th third year of officially having 37 out of 39 of our sturgeon recovery project that is uh, that we've been work working on with Rainy River and with MNRF and all of our other partners. We had undertaken projects that um, affect the water system and, and our sturgeon population was decimated by pollution and by the mill and everything else. So we had to do something to try and recover our sturgeon. So what we did was something so dramatic. It was so beautiful. We hooked up with Rainy River and we got um, 37, actually 39 sturgeon, juvenile sturgeon. And if you've never seen one, they're like, a juvenile mm -hmm. is like, monster right monster funniest looking fish ever i'm allergic to fish so if i would have been born 100 years ago i probably never would have survived right so but the sturgeon is beautiful so we have we did something so dramatic we had, uh, um, inserted them did surgical had a surgery on every single fish that was put into the river system um, that would that had GPS in them. So they are running around as we speak within the Winnipeg River. We have monitors, they're tracking what where they're going, what they're doing. Are they surviving? What you know, we, we have names for them because some of them are just crazy. They're going all over the place. Some of them just love to stay right there, right? So we're collecting data with our partners seeing what they're doing so that we can revive the population um a couple of them have snuck off they're still alive but they've made it through the dams which is to us is amazing um so we share that information we are in a data collection year and we're always willing to share that one of the other things that we've teamed up with the University of Guelph and one of our people is Brittany Luby, and we've taken on a Monoman project. So we're looking at, you know, kind of what's happening and it's leading us to develop better relationship with um, Lake of the Woods Control Board, you know, which kind of monitors what we're doing. So uh, we're very proud of two of those things, just trying to revive 
you know, bring back what our people used to be doing. Um, some of the good news is that because of how the pollution and how the water works and it's, you know, washed away, we've seen a major reduction in the level of mercury in our, our fisheries. So that's promising in terms of being able to revive, um, do a commercial fisher men peace according to provincial laws otherwise we take what we need and we we do what needs to to be done here within the south one uh one of the other things we're very proud of and we just made major announcements is we've done uh we've completed our center of economic development so um our center of ex uh, excellence of said of economic development so we do have a monster gym slash you name it everything that's on the go we re-renovated our um our office spaces so we have three uh meeting spaces that's available for anybody to come out and utilize if they, if they need to with all the services the bells and whistles so we're just making things a little bit pretty now and you know so it's functional we got the high speed access uh, we got the partnerships with Kennard District Service Board to bring in Starlink. We have, um, we were involved in a project with Bell that got us a lot of broadband for our community. So we have the, the infrastructure here. Our community has uh, 65 units. Um, we're very small, but we're very great. I do say that we're great in terms of we don't have a lot of the other major monster social issues of some of the other communities and we've managed to really take care of a lot of things i never say we're perfect i always say that we're okay because we have learned to basically just take care of our own and manage things the way that we know how and really put an effort into building healthy communities by empowering our families and take, making our kids first and foremost, which means taking care of all of their needs. So we deliver everything. Services in our communities rate right from primary care to foot care to Ontario Works, which is the whole gamut from employment related services to, to the financial pieces. We have we do economic development, we we take care of our natural resourcing, we got legal, health and social, you name it, we do it. Everything gets done in-house. And we do it that because we have great partnerships. Um, anything with that in terms of the community? Other than that, I'll go into the big stuff that we love that everybody gets impacted by. Uh, Chief uh, uh, Kobanes, I was just going to comment about your new centre there, and uh, perhaps there's an opportunity down the road where we can come out as a Rotary Club and have a meeting there. By all means, we have, uh, like I said, we have three meeting spaces, one that will accommodate the larger groups. We have... Um, one upstairs that will accommodate 12 to 15 people with all the bells and whistles and, and, and that's our training room. And then we can, you know, we have a space downstairs that can accommodate smaller, smaller meetings. And of course we do all the catering and, and things like that. I, I will say we make the best bannock. We have the best bannock makers, but every community will say that. <laughs> yeah, we're muted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're muted. Chief Kobanis, with the sturgeon, uh, if, if someone catches one of the tagged sturgeon, can you tell that it's tagged or it, it, how does that work? Yes, they are all definitely tagged and you cannot miss the tags. You know what I mean? And, and definitely if you catch a sturgeon, you know it's one of ours because over the years of collecting our own data, we have only caught one. So now we have 37 of the 39. So you know that they're not just running around and they're all tagged specific. So how far would the sturgeon travel? Like okay. one that uh, wanders off, uh, you said somewhere uh, all over the place. How far do they go? What we have been able to do, because we lost one one year, they got through the, through the white dog dam and they traveled and this one actually got back and we don't know 
I don't, we don't know what they maybe they got super spidey senses or something but he found his way back and the other one we haven't been able to track but we do know um as far as they were a, our tracking system was able to reach we knew that they had gone a couple dams ahead so wherever he's traveling maybe he's got a girlfriend he's following or something you know so our gis is able to track uh a certain amount. Good, if not, I'll move on. Am I good to move on? Okay, this is the exciting piece. I also sit um, as president for Canard Chiefs Advisory and have been there for, I think I've sat at that level for well over 10 years now. Um, and since then, we've come such a long way, right? We're, uh, Kunar Chiefs represents nine communities, very, nine communities, very strong. And um, we are governed by our chiefs, which is why we believe we make a lot of progress and we're progressive, but we're also what keeps us in our, what keeps us successful is our um, culture our language, our traditions, right? Everything that we do is done in ceremony. And everything that we do is done in ceremony. And we have that direction to know that we're on the right path. And we celebrate that with our partners. So a couple of things I'm so excited is um, we just closed. And I'll, I'll, one of our major projects we just closed was October 1st. We actually now own Birchwood Terrace. Uh, which is now turned into Wigwas Elder and Senior Care. So the official name change and everything. And I have all these documents that we can share after, and I can email them out if people are interested. But Wigwas was, was an initiative that we were directed by many years ago to, by our elders, was to look at facilities or look at building our own. So the opportunity actually came up to purchase um, Birchwood and start making those those changes as the direction of our people right and also to look at being inclusive of of the work that we were doing um, so we took possession as of October 1st um, we had the 94 bed or sorry 96 bed that comes with with um, the ownership and in that time, what we've done is we've um, grouped with another um, organization called Yi Hung, which is a management of um, geriatrics. And they they work down south, and they're such a beautiful company. So they're they've come up here, and they're building capacity with our within our own team. But also in that, we've also secured an additional um, sixty four licenses for overall 160 bed facility which we're going to be building in one of our neighboring communities um, because they have the infrastructure to support what the province needs so that's extremely exciting so we we are anticipating seeing an entirely new unit a beautiful center that's going to be for everybody it's not just for my people our people but it's for all of our people Right, and we're looking at uh, transferring that capacity. Um, it's actually, it's happening. It's now, it's in the works. And one of the most beautiful things that we did and we said we're not going to function like how the old management worked in Birchwood was that we turned it into a not-for-profit um, organization, right? So we do have to, and will follow a lot of the provincial um regulations and it's not about money this is not a place where you're going to make money over over money it's about providing the care our people deserve right and it's not to say birchwood didn't try their best but they weren't the greatest and things seriously had to change so that is it scares me a little bit because you know i, I will say with canard chiefs advisory if we don't know how to do things we are the best at surrounding ourselves and bringing in the people that we know need to help us 
and we're great at partnerships because that's what we do. We know we can't do things alone. We'd rather do it with um, the help of all of our, our people within the area because we're not we're all not going anywhere. So we might as well, you know, work together and make sure that you know we're 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 good to go. Um, Is there a projection date for the completion of that facility? We are aiming for at least five years. We've already started, we've got the site designated. We have received funds to towards the design of, of the facility. So we're we're engaging. We're definitely engaging. I know it's so exciting. I'm so excited. <laughs> when does the transfer of Birchwood formally take? It's place? done. Oh, it's it, done. Okay. It's done as of October 1st. Okay. Uh, so it is now Weegwas. We're still keeping the, the the Birchwood name until we can officially go through our ceremonial pieces. And I believe early November is when we're actually going to do um, a celebration of some sort, acknowledging that. And yeah, it's just, it's exciting. It's exciting. So one of the other things that I'm going to touch on is our All Nations Health Partners. Way back in the day, and when I was chief, we, we visited several sites and uh, we were thinking, okay, we need to do something, right? We need to get some better infrastructure for our people until our elders sat us down and said, hey, why, why are we just doing it for our people? We need to work at partnerships and doing it for, you know, all of our people across, you know, the region. And, and so anyways, we all got together. We started linking up with our partners and, you know, looking at saying what we can do for each other, with each other. And then we came and formed the All Nations Health Partner, right, which includes municipalities, which includes um, the hospital, you know, all kinds of other social agencies that have come to the table, uh, including Treaty 3, and we formed this beautiful partnership. We had our growing pains, right? We, we didn't always agree on everything, but we've come to a place now where we've, we've established that relationship, and that relationship for us was, was based on mutual respect, based on our, our relationship with, with everybody. And as a spinoff to that, I truly know and believe that if it wasn't for the partnership, the hospital itself would not, their studies would have been sitting on the shelves still waiting to be funded and still would have been dragging their feet. You would not have seen any movement whatsoever if we had not formed that partnership. And if we were all not at the table fighting for the new infrastructure, right, that we need. Because that's like, who can live in a hundred year old building and just keep renovating and renovating and renovating that's not acceptable it's not acceptable for anybody so as a result we've done that we're working together we still argue a little bit every now and then and we love to fight but we hash it out we work together we discuss those issues and as a result of that we've also come to develop a um um the ontario health team when we had partners who said no we can't do it. We had five days. It was so dramatic, so dramatic when they said, no, you can't do it. You can't submit an application. We did it. We did it with our chief advisor. We submitted an overall Ontario health team submission. And oh, it was dramatic. It was right down to the line and right down to the wire. We submitted it. We got approved. So we are one of the most unique Ontario health teams in all of Ontario. And it's all based on, you know, the kind of the, the, the model that we, that we do moving forward. And it's, it's a work in progress. We're still figuring stuff out. But as a result, we've got all kinds of tables that are addressing, making very systemic changes to systems that need to be conducive to all of us living in the North, right? And addressing those issues, those challenges with cross-border issues, um, even just with high cost, right? So we're trying to work those out and, and it, it leads to a lot of greater partnerships. So we're still working on a lot of those, those things. Um, and we got a lot of partners and there's always, always the information and these are shareable on the websites and, you know, things like that. So, and we do meet often, we do meet, um, 
every two weeks or every month, whatever it is. And we sit together and we talk about the challenges, get updates from our, our working tables. And we work well with all the, all the doctors, our healthcare providers, our traditional healers, our elders, our people, our leadership. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful partnership that we can model right across, right across the board. So also within Kenora Chiefs is um, our, one of our greatest things that we've done is partner, the partnerships we've created as a result of supporting our youth. One of the things is our Jay's Care um, initiative that we've partnered with Jay's Care and the Toronto Blue Jays for the last five years in um, developing a uh, rookie league which is now turned into a national indigenous rookie league um, as a result of our movement within the afn so we've also been very um we've secured one of the field of dreams under the toronto blue jays and the jays care so they're funding um a baseball field which is going to be housed at our next beautiful project, which is we were successful in um, acquiring the old Strucker property. And that is a beautiful piece of property. And we got it for a steal of a deal, I'm telling you. So what we've managed to do with that property is we are, we are putting a lot of our services out there. Uh, we have a six bed resi youth residential unit that's staffed by all of our, our helpers um, that go to support healing of, of all of our youth. It's open, it's inclusive. We also, and trust me, this sounds weird. We have horses. <laughs> <laughs> we've adopted a different kind of way of offering you know different modes of healing and and therapy to our kids to all of our people that need to go out there so it's called it's equine therapy so we have i don't even know how much we got little ones we got big monster ones and then we got the wild ojibwe ponies that that run wild in in on the property and it's we invite anybody who wants to come out and just experience, you know, either whether it be a ride or, you know, the other, all the other animals that are out there just to, just to participate. But also we're housing, we got the monster infrastructure for recreation, which includes the, the building of three ball fields, which we hope to host a lot of other events for everybody who wants to come together and enjoy the sport. Uh, which includes a bigger recreational area around the beach. So we've expanded that to include uh, beach volleyball. We have the infrastructure like boats, canoes, all that things. If people want to engage and just get out there and enjoy. One of the other things that we do plan to do is, is our teaching area, which will include our longhouse, um, other things that we want to make sure that there's a place for our people to gather together to learn to just kind of be host bigger events that that we can do outside so that's um it's open to everybody and the infrastructure is there we're, and it's just it's beautiful um one of the other things i want to touch on is we've acquired a lot of other real estate in in the Kenora area. And one of the things that we're really proud of is we acquired the old uh, Daily Miner News Building. We've been working with uh, Solgen and um, the municipal or the, the provincial government in creating a Kenora Justice Center. Um, it was gi originally given to Treaty 3 to, to get going, right, the initiative, but they weren't as successful and things didn't work as fast as they wanted to so they engaged with our chiefs so we purchased the building 